Although we've come a long ways in viewing our sexual health as something positive, there's still a lot of stigma and myth about anal sex. So anal sex, like any kind of sexual activity, can be made safer by a few good practices. Before we get into the nuts and bolts of anal sex, we need to talk consent. Consent is essential for any sexual activity. However, anal sex is an activity that relies on trust and good communication with you and your partner. First order of business, fingernails. You don't want jagged fingernails near those delicate areas. File fingernails before any kind of fingering, vaginal, or anal penetration with your hands. And for those with wolverine like fingers, just use a glove and put some cotton balls in the tips of the glove and then that way you can keep your long nails without having to worry about breaking through the barrier or harming your partner. Gloves are essential for any sort of fingering activity, vaginal or anal. Especially if you have any little cuts on your hand. As you've probably guessed, barriers are essential for any kind of sexual activity and anal play is no different. So let's start with one of the better known barriers, the condom. The only exceptions to using a condom are A, if you've been tested for STIs, B, are monogamous, and C, has strapped your partner to a polygraph test to make sure they're not cheating on you. Condoms need to go on penises. They also need to go on sex toys. So if you're sharing sex toys, you need to make sure that they're properly barriered as well with a condom. Vaginas have a mystical ecosystem that can be disturbed by things like poop. If you're going back and forth, either wash your hands, get a new glove, or do something with a new condom. If you're thinking of any kind of oral activities with an anus, make sure you have a dental dam. So a dental dam can be made with an external or male condom right on the spot. Practice beforehand so in the heat of the moment you don't have to worry about it. So cut the top off the condom where the semen usually collects, then slice up the side. It should turn out like a flat sheet which is basically all a dental dam is. Be careful of cutting or tearing into the main part of the barrier which kind of defeats the purpose of using one. Not only can you get STIs from oral anal contact, you can also get gastrointestinal stuff too, like E. coli, so make sure those barriers are in place. Artificial lube is sometimes necessary for vaginal sex, but it's absolutely essential for any kind of anal sex. So don't attempt any kind of anal penetration without lube, period. What kind of lube can you use safely? There are folks who swear by shortening or lard, and these are not options for anyone using a latex condom because these sorts of oils will break condoms down. So put the lard back in the kitchen, unless you're both STI, free and monogamous and have been strapped to said polygraph. For those who are using condoms, you can use either a silicone or water-based lube, and there's lots of different kinds. The silicone doesn't have to be reapplied as frequently, but it may stain sheets and clothes. A word of caution, stay away from numbing lube. It should not be used for any kind of anal activity. Some folks may think that it's a great way for them to try this activity, but the anus is a very sensitive region, and if you use a numbing lube, you may not be aware of any damage that you're causing that part of your body until it's too late. So stay away from numbing lube if it hurts, either use more lubrication that's not numbing or try that activity another time. Relaxation is the key to safer anal sex. You have to proceed slowly and cautiously. While there are some folks who enjoy activities like fisting, these are definitely not first aid activities. So learn more if you want to get to something a little more advanced like this. And this goes without saying, but I am going to say it anyway, don't get drunk and have anal sex. Don't get drunk and have any sex, but definitely don't have anal sex. It's the kind of activity that requires patience, control, and finesse, and these tend not to be the qualities of people who are drunk. I'm assuming you don't want to become another emergency room horror story. So that means you have to be super careful with what you're actually putting into a rectum. Nothing gets lost in a vagina because the road stops at the cervix. The same is not true of the rectum, which leads to the colon, which leads to the small intestine, and on and on. The colon goes up there a long ways. If you lose a toy up the rectum and into your colon, you are going to have to go to the emergency room to get it removed. And chances are, this is not how you want to spend your Saturday night. Only insert toys with strings or bases.
You'll notice that many anal toys actually have flared bases or strings or that kind of thing. These are to save you from emergency room embarrassment, so use them. If you do lose a condom inside the colon, don't worry about it. Probably on one of your next bowel movements, it will come out. But if you're concerned, again, you can go to the emergency room. Finally, these tips are only applicable to people with healthy rectum. So if you have hemorrhoids or fissures or any kind of inflammatory bowel disease, you're really not quite sure if this is for you. Talk to your doctor before you do any experimenting. To recap, you should always use a barrier, like a condom or a glove. Always use condom safe lube and never numbing lube. Relax and make sure your partner is relaxed. Only insert objects with bases or strings. So if you have any questions, talk to your doctor, nurse practitioner, or local sexual health educator. Stay safe and have fun.